Welcome, welcome, boys. Okay, in this video, we're working on the 1993 Corvette, which you rarely, rarely see on this channel due to me never driving it. And long before I did YouTube, I did all the maintenance on this thing. So nowadays, it never breaks, so there's never any videos on it. But today, we are going to be flushing the coolant. So currently, this car has Dex Cool in it, which is that orange coolant. And we're going to get rid of that and we're going to go green. Because nowadays there's a big push to go green. Also, for those who don't know, the LT1 engine in the Corvette has aluminum heads and a cast iron block. And cast iron is known for rusting. And rust is an orange-like color. So, what I don't like about the Dex Cool in this car is... In case it rusts, like how are you going to know that your coolant's dirty? Because the rust would be the same color as the coolant is naturally. And I don't really like that idea. So we're going to put green in there. That way, if it ever does get bad, you know, prior to when it's supposed to actually fail, the coolant and degrade, uh, I'll know about it just by looking at it. Because you can't really tell by looking at it now. Because if we go in here... See, it's kind of orange, but I don't know, is that orange because it's rusty, or is that orange just because it's its natural color? Who the hell knows? Also, what the hell is this thing? Look how scary this thing is. Like, that is not a normal grasshopper, like a green, friendly-looking one. Look how mean that thing is. What are these things? Are these grasshoppers, but like Nightmare Edition, or what? I don't know, but I don't like them hanging out on my engine. They're kind of terrifying-looking. Okay, we are not going to change the thermostat in this thing, though. We're just going to reuse the one I've got in there. But uh, how we get to that is it's right under the intake. So order of operation is going to be pull this intake boot off in access to the thermostat. Uh, we are going to go down under the passenger side, I believe is where the petcock is on this car. I think on my Camaro driver's side, same with the Crown Vic, and I think this and the BMW are on the passenger side. I don't know more once I get under there. I'll probably have to jack the car up because uh, I don't believe I can slither on under there. So what we're going to do is, once we open up the thermostat, pull the thermostat out, and then uh, that way we have free-flowing coolant. We're going to use some flush. And that way we can flush all the orange crap out. And then go straight pure, nice newfangled green. I have two of these just in case. Because what I might have to do is put one in. That way it seals and then we can just circulate all the coolant through there with the flush. Drain it again. And then uh, put my second one in there if we're going to reuse that, uh, that thermostat. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm not really sure the direction of flow... I know it cools the heads first on these LT1s, which they call reverse flow. So I'm not sure if this is the cold, you know, just recently uh, cooled coolant. And then it goes into the pump this way, and then pumps out one of the other ways. Or if it goes in on the other side, cool, and then... The yucky stuff comes out this way and goes in the radiator. I don't know. I'll have to dig that. I'll have to look into that and then, like, draw some arrows just so I know. The ideal I'm going to take the hose and flush the radiator. So I'm going to disconnect the hoses. Once the radiator is flush with garden hose water, then I can work on starting it and pumping the water from my hose to whichever hose is the correct direction first that it's going in and then... Ideally, get most of the orange stuff out that way before I run the flush to get rid of any rust or other foreign objects. So that's the game plan. We'll just time lapse everything POV wise, but now you know exactly what I'm doing. So let's get her done. Okay, and after consulting our factory service manual here, I guess you can pause here if you want to see the direction of flow on 2D as best as you can. 
I went ahead and marked as many as I can see. So we do have coming out of the thermostat, it goes this way to this T, and it's coming this way. Going into the water pump. We have it coming off the lower radiator hose into the water pump on this side. Then on that side, coming out of the water pump and then going into the radiator. And then that little guy is going into the uh, thermostat housing that direction. Uh, the only one I'm not actually sure of because I can't see in the picture is this thing coming out of the pump. So I'm not sure which direction the heater core hoses go. I'm not sure if it's coming out of the pump and going that way in and then coming out of the heater core this way, or if it's going in that way and then coming out and going to the pump. I would assume the pump has to pump it into the heater core. So I would ask you me that this is coming from the pump and going into the core. This is coming out of the core, but I didn't arrow that because we're not 100% sure but the moral of the story is now we know which direction everything's flowing so I can always just pop off the upper radiator hose on that side spray our garden hose water in to uh, flush the radiator out from top to bottom let it run out the petcock and then when I pop that uh, thermostat housing off spraying any water in we'll pump it through the radiator that way and out And uh, it'll go, you know, where it goes from there. But that's not really that important because once we drain as much crap as we need to out of there and fill it back up with our flush and our pure water, with no thermostat in there, it's just going to circulate and do its thing. So let's get her done. Okay, boys, we're just under the passenger side of the radiator in the back. Our pet cock's up in there. Might be a little too dark for you to see it, but that's where it is. So we're going to unscrew it, collect what we can in here, and then while that's doing its thing, we'll go ahead and take that air intake off to gain access to the thermostat. Okay, so we got just a gasket here. So what we're about to do is put those two eight millimeters back and then what we're gonna do is close the petcock and force water into the radiator with that hose. And as we're spraying it in there, um, what doesn't come out of the petcock because it'll be closed, gonna go up that hose and into the water pump that way. And it's going to come out this hose uh, onto wherever the hell I decide to drain the ground. Probably, but maybe I'll move that container over here. I might go inside and see if I have a bigger beastlier one that I can capture some of the stuff in. And then uh, the heater's going to be on, the engine will be running, and then the water pump will be able to circulate all this stuff out through there. And then once we have nice clear water, and I open that up and confirm it's all nice and clear, then we'll go ahead and uh, drain as much as we can again and then run the flush through and then uh, do that for 10 minutes until we get as much stuff out of here as we possibly can.
Okay, boys, we've already cycled the flush through there for 10 minutes, shut it off, let it cool down a bit to about 160, and then we drained all the uh, water and flush, and then I went ahead and ran it. So what we've done, which I'll time lapse here in a second from POV view, so I'll explain what I've been doing. So we take this hose, we stick it in here, and spray the water into the radiator. And then we have the pet cock closed. So then the water pumps up through that lower radiator hose and into the thermostat. Well, where there used to be a thermostat, but the now top of the uh, water pump. And then it flows this some way right out there. So as we start the car and let it run with the cap and everything on, we got anything that was in the uh, block out, and then now it's just mostly clear water. So I'm just going to do that again time lapse and show you guys what I did and then once we get those bubbles out of there and once we get uh, any of that orange stuff out and it's just all clear water at that point then we're gonna go ahead and fill it up with our 50-50 green coolant and distilled water and then uh, that'll be it the vet will be back to green and that's what we're going to keep in it for the rest of time so that'll be green in this car green in the Crown Vic green in the BMW, green in the town car, green in the Challenger, and green in the Ram. So we're going to have everything green with the exception of the Camaro which isn't here at the moment and that will be the only thing running on Dex Cool. Everything else is going to be green and distilled water. Okay, boys, so we got our concentrated coolant here. So we're going to dump that in first because we do have some pure water still chilling inside the block, I reckon. So we're going to put a little bit of concentrate in there just to kind of counterbalance it, and then um, I do have some 50 50 premix chilling over yonder, so we'll put that in to kind of finish it up. That way we have a legit 50 50 mix, and then once that gets kind of filled up, we'll go ahead and put that back on with our new gasket and our old uh, thermostat which is just over somewhere over there on the ground in my toolbox Okay, so we took it for a little spin and I uh, believe we bled all the air out. Um, this does have a bleeder valve on it, but I kind of snapped that off years ago. So nowadays we don't use that anymore. We have to give it the old drive around and uh, slosh it around and do one of those numbers with the heater on. But now we have a nice green antifreeze. Our reservoir tank is topped up. It's about halfway between the cold and hot. But this thing never gets that hot anymore since it only rolls... Uh, 
160 degree thermostat. So we should be all right. I'll uh, take it on a drive and then use my antifreeze tester to make sure we have adequate amount. Uh, as long as I have at least three balls floating, I'll be fine. That's up to negative 10 degrees in Missouri. I don't think it ever gets anywhere near below 10 degrees in the wintertime. So we are running slightly more water than coolant, but I am, uh, I got some just concentrate left, so if I find room for it. I can always add it or drain a little bit and then add some concentrate, whatever. But, uh, that should be a boom done. So that is how we flush the coolant, our 93 vet. Uh, reuse the same 160 degree thermostat and then keep get rid of that desk cool and roll green so that'll do it for now thanks for watching boys peace